Hi everybody, so today we're going to be talking about the digestive system histology. And in case you don't know what histology means, histology is the study of tissues. So for example, in this case we're going to be studying the tissues that are in the digestive system. If I wanted to study the tissues that make up my muscle, uh, that's another form of tissue, that's histology. My skin is another form of histology, studying the tissues that make up my skin. Remember, tissues are made up of a group of cells that have a similar function. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And there's actually going to be a few different levels to this. So the first layer is going to be what we call the mucosa. And that's what I'm going to be covering in this video. I'll make other videos on the other, la uh, other layers, okay? So there's the mucosa. The mucosa is better known as the mucous membrane. All right? And there's going to be three layers to the mucosa that I talked about today. The first one is going to be the mucosal epithelium. The second layer is what we call the lamina propria. And then the third layer is going to be the muscularis mucosa. Okay, and this is what I'm going to cover today is basically these three right here. However, in the digestive system, underneath the mucosa, so let's put this as a number one, and I'll make this more like A, B, and C, so you know that this goes with this. So after the mucosa, we have the submucosa, and like I said, I will make a different video on the submucosa. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna have another muscular layer, and this is going to be called the muscularis externa. All right, and then we're gonna have the other layer, the next layer is going to be called the serosa, and this is gonna be our outermost layer. So this is the innermost layer that we're gonna have. So if you were to look in the intestines or anything like that, this is going to be the innermost layer. If you want an example of this, if you open your mouth and look, and we're gonna go into this in just a minute, if you open your mouth and look, you will see the mucous membrane, part of the mucous membrane of the digestive system. So let's go ahead and get started. And it is going to look like this. So we said that we have the mucosal epithelium. And this may sound really scary, like big words, right? And again, epithelium is just skin cells, right? It's a form of skin cells. This is, this is epithelium right here. All mucosal means is it contains glands that secrete uh, mucus. So in my mucosal epithelium, I have epithelial cells that are mixed with glands that secrete mucus. So we have epithelial cells that are mixed with glands that secrete mucus. Simple as that. This sounds very big wordish, <laughs> for lack of a better term, right? That's all it is. You're just secreting mucus, right? Okay, so now, here's the thing, is there's two types of epithelial cells that are going to be in the digestive system. So the first one is, is in the oral cavity, and just so you know, in the oral cavity, just so you know, the oral cavity is basically another name for your mouth. It's just, this sounds a lot more intelligent, right? So in your mouth and in your pharynx, your pharynx is your throat. So in the pharynx and the mouth, the esophagus, the esophagus is a tube that's going to carry food from your throat down to your stomach. Okay, so in the oral cavity, the pharynx, the esophagus, and the anus, you have stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, now that sounds really hard, right? Stratified squamous epithelium. All that stratified means is as many layers. That's all it means. 
This is stratified squamous epithelium. You have many layers. And I'm going to explain why in just a minute. So we have many layers. This means flat. Squamous just means flat. Right? And then epithelium again, like we've been saying, it's a type of cell. And this is a, an example of epithelium right here on your skin. Okay? So that's what we're going to have there. Now, the rest of the digestive system, whoop, the rest of the digestive system has simple columnar epithelium. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than our skin cells, okay? But it has simple columnar epithelium. Now, once again, stratified means there's many layers. Simple just means there's one layer. So this is one layer. All right? Columnar means it's column-shaped or it's rectangular-shaped. All right, and then again, we have the epithelium, okay? So that is going to be our mucosal epithelium. Let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick, okay? Oh, some things real quick. So if you notice, we have many layers of flat cells here in the mouth, the pharynx, the esophagus, and the anus. But here we only have simple columnar, right? So if I were to draw these, and I'm gonna be drawing more of these, this is gonna be flat cells, right? My, my stratified squamous is going to be flat cells. These are going to be a column. They're gonna be rectangular, right? Here's why. Because see how here we have many layers? If you think about it, food just passes by these areas, right? It only passes by the mouth. We chew it and everything else, and foods are getting around and hitting the sides of the mouth and everything else. The pharynx, you swallow it, and the food or the bolus is what we call chewed up food is going to go down into your esophagus. And the esophagus, it just passes right through. You actually squeeze it, when it's a muscular tube that's going to squeeze and pass it through. And then we all know what happens in the anus, that's where you poop out of, right? So because here you just have the food going by, you, you're gonna scrape off cells, you're gonna scrape off epithelial cells. Just like here, I'm losing epithelial cells all the time. That's why I need to have many layers. Right? And because I'm going to have many layers, I can't have many layers of these type of cells because it would just take up too much space in the body and probably even clog some things up, like, such as the esophagus. So the, it's a perfect design because this is nice and flat and I have many layers so they can come off, just like my skin cells come off all the time. Here, what's going to happen is we're either going to be absorbing nutrients from the, uh, in the intestines, right? We're going to be absorbing nutrients or we're gonna be secreting stuff. We don't want it to go past many layers. We can't afford for this to go past many layers. So it's just a nice, simple one layer for, for things to, to be absorbed or to be, um, or to be excreted or secreted, right? So let's go ahead and take a look some more at this. And the first thing I'm going to do is let's draw some pictures of our mucosal epithelium. So if we go like this, these are my flat cells, right? This is my flat cells right here, okay? And then like we said, oh, and I'm gonna put an opening right here because remember we have those mucosal cells, right? That are in here. Let's go ahead and draw those right now. Okay, so I'm gonna have my mucosal cells. Right, and these are gonna secrete mucus. And I know these squamous cells are kind of hard to see because they're flat, but for the most part, they're gonna look like this, right? And then I'm gonna draw some more. Okay, and these, these are basically all flat cells that are here, all right? So, you can see I have many layers. So now I can afford to lose some of these, right? Because I have so many layers there, right? So now let's look at this. Is, by the way, this is going to be 
the simple, this is the stratified, stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, and again, this is what we're going to find in our, our mouth and our, our uh, throat and our esophagus and our anus. So we're going to find this, okay? If I were to come over here now, and actually I'm just going to draw it down here, and I were to draw the rest of the digestive system, and let me make a little space in there because I want to put my mucus cells in there. And one thing I'm going to do here, which all of these cells that I'm drawing actually have a nucleus. And I'm just going to make this easy and go like this. What do you guys think? All right. And so let's put a nucleus in here and here and here. Okay. And I, I should put a nucleus up in here, but I'm not going to put it in there. Just realize it's there. And then like we said, I am going to have my mucus cells. Here's my mucus cell. There's my mucus cell right here. Okay, there's my mucus cells. Okay, so if I were to write up here, this is my mucus secreting gland. Okay, right there. And here it is down here. Okay, so this is the difference between the rest of the digestive system and the areas we talked about before. This is my simple columnar epithelium. Okay, that's my simple columnar epithelium right there. So now, here's the next thing that's going to happen. Is underneath this layer here, we have something called the lamina propria, which we mentioned. So I'm going to draw my lamina propria right here. That's my lamina propria. All right, and this is all my lamina propria. We're going to draw some down here too. And there's my lamina propria. And here's some more. And Boom, there's all my lamina propria. So now, what the heck is the lamina propria? Okay. So, what the heck is lamina propria? Well, all this is is connective tissue. Lamina propria. It is a thin layer of loose connective tissue. Okay, it's loose connective tissue. All right, and we're just going to call connective tissue CT. Okay, so we've got loose connective tissue. And all it's going to do is it's going to connect this epithelium to the underlying layers. That's all lamin appropriate does. It just connects the... the uh, epithelium to underlying layers, which connects the epithelium to underlying layers. Isn't it kind of funny that the name, the name is connective tissue and it connects. That's all it does. Pretty simple, huh? Lamin appropria sounds like scary words. Like, what the heck is that? Just connects. Just an area that you connect. All right? So now, the last thing we're going to have under here is in this area, we are going to have a thin layer. We're going to have a thin layer of muscle. Okay? A thin layer. I'm going to make it thick so you can see it. But realize, this is a thin layer of muscle. Okay? And I'm going to put it down here. Let's go like this. Maybe I'm better off. And this, I have this thin layer here. Okay? So now, 
This is known as my muscularis mucosa. Boom, that's it up there. This is my muscularis mucosa right here. Okay, so now here's the thing, like we said, it's muscle. This can contract a little bit and help things move. It can move the mucosa, okay? But the role that this plays, the muscularis mucosa, is in the small intestine. This stays in a state of contraction, and it, and it has a muscle tone. And because it has that muscle tone, what it does is it takes this flat level of cells and actually pulls it together so now, instead of this being nice and flat, it's going to go, it's going to fold. It will fold into, we call these plica. It's going to fold into plica, right? And you don't need to know that term yet. But because it folds into plica, plica, we've increased the surface area of how many cells we can get in there. So imagine now, this would be all like my, my simple squamous epithelium. Okay, going the whole way down. All right, so just reviewing, this is the uh, muscularis mucosa, right? Muscularis mucosa. The lamina propria is going to connect my epithelial cells to the underlying layers, right? And you're gonna find we actually have more connective tissue in here. All right, and basically, and then I have my stratified squamous epithelium with my mucous glands mixed in my simple columnar epithelium with mucous glands mixed in also. So that's it for the mucosa of the digestive system uh, histology. And thank you so much for watching.